You are watching With a Cup of Tea, the High Plains Book Awards edition, a production of This House of Books, an independent bookstore cooperative and tea shop in downtown Billings, Montana. Now here's our show. Say your name for me so I know how to, how to say it. Well, I've, I've, uh, I've heard everything, so uh, it's Hamalainen, Pekka. Pekka? Hamalainen. Oh, Pekka. Actually, in Finnish, it would be Pekka Hamalainen, but uh, Pekka Hamalainen is, is, is absolutely fine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> give, it, give, it, give it an American speaker. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah. No, like, trust me, I've, I've heard all, all. I've heard it all, yeah. I'm sure you have, yes. <laughs> well, uh, welcome to this House of Books. I have with us Pekka Hamelainen, who um, uh, has a book uh, that's a uh, finalist for the High Plains Book Fest. And we're going to talk about that book in a minute. But maybe first, um, you could tell us a little about yourself, Pekka. OK, sure. And you know, thank you uh, for having me. It's, it's uh, already an honor. Uh, um, so, uh, I was born and raised uh, in Finland, uh, Helsinki, and, uh, and I started as a high school teacher, uh, so that was my sort of uh, uh, entryway into, into uh, uh, history. And then uh, um, I, I wrote my uh, uh, dissertation on, on, uh, on Comanche, Comanche Indians, and uh, I've uh, been at it ever since, so um, yeah. So the the book, the Comanche Empire, which was extremely well received, um, was actually a dissertation. It started from that. It was my dissertation, yes, but it took about uh, three, four, five years after the dissertation just to revise and make, make it make it better and more readable and uh, more compelling. Sure. Yeah. Now, uh, you're from Finland, but, but you have a very strong uh, interest and background in uh, uh, U.S. history, and particularly in uh, Native American uh, history. Mm -hmm. How, how yeah. did that come about? Well, it, you know, I've always been interested in, uh, in, uh, uh, in, in Native uh, uh, histories and uh, uh, you know, since since I was a little kid, you know, it, uh, it, it was always uh, uh, you know very exciting to read about or, uh, or watch movies and so forth. But then uh, uh, when I when I started to, you know my academic studies, uh, 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 this thing called the the new Indian history was really starting to boom, and it was. Uh, extremely exciting. It was, you know, a lot of uh, new scholars, uh, a lot of new interpretations and methodologies and, uh, and historians are really sort of taking indigenous history seriously and uh, indigenous uh, uh, peoples uh, 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 seriously and, uh, and uh, sort of, uh, uh, it, it, it was very, very exciting uh, time. Uh, uh, in the in the late nineties, uh, uh, to come into the field, and I was sort of just swept by the momentum that was uh, that was going on then. Mm -hmm. Well, tell us about your current book. Uh, it's a, it's it has to do with the uh, the history of this, the um, Lakota. Yes. Well, that's. Uh, uh, I kind of uh, what drew me into. I always, I, obviously, I always knew about Lakotas, and I, as everybody does, you know, they're essential to to uh, American history, and uh, and uh, you can't really understand uh, American history without uh, Lakotas uh, uh, in the picture. So I always wanted to write about them, and uh, then. I, I realized uh, uh, there was this wonderful archive available, uh, which is the uh, uh, winter counts, Lakota winter counts, which are basically an indigenous uh, historical archive. Uh, they, uh, 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 just a brief uh, uh, description of perhaps about the winter counts is, uh, is they're basically pictographical uh, calendars. So uh, uh, there would be a winter count keeper 
uh, who would pick one event every year uh, uh, to sort of uh, uh, stand for the history for that particular year. You know, it could be uh, a war, it could be something really mundane, yeah, and, and so forth and so forth. So, um, um, and it's, 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 a, it's just an amazing archive because we can actually see uh, uh, what mattered to the Lakotas most. It's, uh, uh, we don't have to necessarily rely on colonial documents. We have this indigenous archive, and, uh, uh, and there, was, there are hundreds and hundreds of those uh, winter counts, or dozens and dozens. And uh, it, it, it was just too, uh, I, I absolutely wanted to write, uh, uh, write uh, use those winter counts to write Lakota history. You know, from the, from the uh, um, earliest possible dates to the present. Well, you, you, you've uh, extended the history back into the, the uh, s as far as the 16th century, as I understand, so. Uh, yeah, and that was crucial, I, I think, in a way. Uh, I think that the problem with Lakota history is usually, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of, uh, I think, uh, the little big horn and, uh, and wounded knee, you know, they, I, they loom so large so that most books uh, uh, have uh, traditionally uh, uh, sort of uh, just trace the immediate events leading up to, uh, to, to Custer's last stand and then the retaliation at Wounded Knee, and uh, which leaves you know, uh, centuries, you know, several centuries you know, sort of out of the picture. Uh, 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 so I wanted to go back. I'm an early American historian and I do 19th century too, so it was natural for me to go uh, uh, back and, uh, but I was so surprised, you know, how dramatic those earlier centuries were. You know, the, 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 it was just a, a stunningly uh, a complicated, dramatic, a lot of warfare, a lot of uh, high level di diplomacy, a lot of struggle and, uh, and uh, uh, it, 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 was, uh, it, it was wonderful to write. Yeah, and I, I was able to, to rely again uh, on the winter concert quite heavily. So it, it, it was really exciting. Well, you, um, you talk about uh, the Lakota having a, a deep role in uh, shaping American history. Mm -hmm. Would that be as a whole or? I think so as a whole, uh, uh, because they they were so powerful already in the in the uh, 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 early 18th century they, that they were uh, holding uh, you know, multiple colonial projects as hostage. Uh, they they were uh, thwarting uh, 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 European expansion, uh, biting European expansion, sometimes uh, uh, aligned with uh, European powers. Then uh, uh, and 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 uh, nobody could ignore the Lakotas. Uh, either they either had to ally with them, run away from them, uh, uh, fight them, uh, but you could not ignore them. So they are absolutely essential to understand the American history. I would say from 1600, uh, 1600s onward. Not only you know say like uh, uh, typically late 19th century history which is the history of Indian Wars. So uh, I think it's it's at least as dramatic those early earlier centuries at least as dra uh, dra dramatic as the as the uh, uh, sort of the climatic uh, 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 Indian Wars uh, in, in the late 19th century. That's, that's very interesting that, that they were as powerful as that for that long. It's, uh... Yes, yes, but they won't went. Even, you know, they it required a lot of uh, adaptation, uh, 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 absorbing uh, uh, new technologies. Horses were obviously uh, essential, but also guns and powder and uh, and, and metal and so forth. So uh, it, it 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 building a, a kind of uh, I, I do call the Lakotas an empire. So uh, uh, I think they were uh, they had an empire, but but it took a lot of time and a lot of effort, diplomatic and military, uh, uh, to 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 get there. Well, who would you um, think would be the audience for this book? Who who might like to read it? Well, I think uh, uh, well, if anybody who 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 
likes or loves the planes. I, I think it's it's uh, uh, that's I think it's it's obvious. But also because I wanted to write kind of uh, uh, not just Lakota history, but also uh, writing Lakota history uh, uh, into the center of American history. So I think it's it's uh, it, 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 the book might appeal to anybody uh, uh, in in a way, you know, because it's it's not just Lead kind of narrow Indian history. I'm I'm bringing in uh, uh, the Spaniards, the, the the French very heavily, the British, and uh, so there are multiple protagonists uh, 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 in the story and the and the uh, uh, struggles and uh, fights and and, uh, uh, and alliances are. It's, it's a sort of ever changing uh, constellation, which is uh, uh, quite stunning. Uh, and, and, and very interesting. So it's not just a history of uh, the Lakota, but uh, and not just a history of the United States either, but uh, going back well before that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I yes, think. exactly. It, it starts in the deep in the colonial era. Yeah. Fascinating. Well, thanks so much for joining us. So it's a, it sounds like a fascinating book and we're really looking forward to seeing it. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for for having me. It was a pleasure. You're very welcome. Yeah. Wherever uh, ever our way, be sure to uh, let us know. We'd be glad to set up something for you at our bookstore. And uh, maybe... sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah, I will take you up on that. <laughs> okay. So long. So long. Take care. This program has been produced by This House of Books in collaboration with the High Plains Book Awards. The Book Awards were established to recognize regional authors and literary work that examines life on the High Plains. Nominations will be accepted starting in January 2021 on the website highplainsbookawards.org.